All right, I'm going to start off with saying that this is not the ideal way to make a video. I would normally use my DSLR and do some editing later, but I do not have that camera with me. So I'm using my iPhone. It's propped up on my car's trunk and it's being held up by a water bottle. So it's kind of a fun Rube Goldberg-y kind of setup today. But anyway, this video is to help determine whether or not a generator of this size can do what you need to be done in your generator usage needs. And I'm making it because someone got to my review of the generator by searching 4,000 watt generator, how much can you use? Or something along those lines. Very specific search term, but something that I feel is relevant and I should have brought up more when I was reviewing the generator. So I have on this notepad some statistics from energy.gov on certain appliances and how much energy they use. So first of all, I had said that this generator can run two fridges, a freezer, and a sump pump, plus other things without a problem, which is true. A fridge is generally going to use between 500 and 750 watts, and a freezer will use something between 250 to 500. Freezers actually use less power because most of the time they are not frost-free models. If yours is a frost-free model, then you probably want to look at that because it's probably going to use significantly more energy than what I just said. But, uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind with anything that uses an electric motor, this goes for like table saws, drills, fridges, freezers, air conditioners, even something like a garage door opener, in case you need to open your garage, they may use up to three times their running current to start. Because as you know, when you accelerate in your car, you use more fuel than when you are coasting or when you're maintaining a steady speed which is just like an electric motor. It takes more energy to start it from a stop than it does when it's running at full speed. And your generator will account for this because notice it says 4,000 peak and 3,500 running. That 500 boost is just for those situations when things bog it down like that. So your generator works in the same way. So if you have like in our situation, two fridges and a freezer, you need to keep them from all coming on at the same time. Now, it is possible that that would happen just by coincidence if you had it running you know, for a few days, they might all come on at the same time. The odds of that are astronomical, however. But when you first turn them on, then you have a pretty good chance that they're all gonna come on at the same time. We're lucky because our main fridge has like a 15 second delay between when it gets power and when it starts running. So we can actually, when we refuel this, because when you refuel a generator, you should shut it off and let it cool a few minutes. It's just safe to do it. I recommend doing it. But obviously, before you turn it off, you need to cut the power to whatever's running to it. So if, if you are running two fridges and a freezer, it might be after you start it back up and turn the power on, they might all try to come on at one time. Well, that's going to stall the generator, and it could also damage it and all of your appliances that you have plugged into it. So... If you have a situation where you're running multiple fridges and they will come on immediately, then you need to unplug one or two of them and then start your generator and then plug them in individually and let the generator speed save you out. Now, if your fridges are running normally, like if they have gotten to their correct temperature again, the compressor only runs maybe like a third of the time. So often the fridge won't be using any power. But regardless, I'm getting kind of off track here. Uh, now, furnaces, if you have an electric furnace, there is no way you're going to run it from a generator. Unless you have a very large whole house generator, you will need to use a space heater or something like a fireplace if you have it. But if you have a gas furnace or a propane furnace, you, if you can plug it into your generator, you can use it because it won't use more than 15 amps or so. So you could actually use your furnace if you wanted to. I have on here TV. Uh, Energy.gov gives a kind of low rating because they aren't counting for projection TVs, which is what we have. So I'm going to say up to 300 watts. Probably less than that if you have an LCD TV, but up to 300 watts. Uh, and again, more if you have like home theater systems and stuff like that. I also have down here sump pump because uh, that's one of the things that we primarily run on it. When we lose power, often flooding comes along with that. So we need the sump pump to keep going. And I have 500 watts. Now, I use this because energy.gov says a well pump uses between 250 and 1250 watts. And I'm just going to guess that a sump pump somewhere in the middle, but on the low end. So I'm going to say 500 watts. 
And for your microwave, if you plan on using your microwave in a generator, the power that it says, like say you have an 1100 watt microwave, that's gonna be low compared to its energy consumption because that's its cooking power. It's saying it, it produces 1100 watts of cooking power. It's probably gonna take more to actually run the microwave. So I would add 25% to that. And then this brings me to my next point. If you're gonna run things that their primary task is to create heat, well, then you're gonna run into problems because things that create heat use resistive heating and resistive heating uses a lot of electricity. Something as simple as a hair dryer uses 1800 watts. So if you're running things like toaster ovens, coffee makers, hair dryers or toasters, electric tea kettles, things like electric stoves, I mean, those will add up really fast. The two space heaters will get this thing to within 500 watts of its max capacity. So you need to keep that in mind. If, if you lose power a lot in the winter and you need to use electric heating of things, you may want to go with something larger than this. Now, in my family situation, we have a gas fireplace that we could run when there is no power, and we rarely lose power in the winter anyway. So this generator generally doesn't get used in the winter. But if you do need a generator in the winter, you're probably going to want something larger than this. But the number one thing to do when figuring out what size generator you would need is to actually look at your appliances and figure out how much energy they use. The easiest way to do that is if they tell you but sometimes they won't tell you in watts. So then what you'll need to do is find the amperage rating and multiply that by volts, because volts times amps equals watts. So say your fridge says it uses five amps. Well, five times 120, because 120 is generally the voltage that we have in America. Five times 120 is 600, so it's a 600 watt appliance. And that's the best thing to do. Go around to things that you would run on your generator and find out how much power does it use. Number one thing you can do. Otherwise, you can use these guidelines. And actually, when you buy a generator, and this generator did come with one, but I couldn't find it. But when you buy a generator, it'll generally come with a chart that tells you this is how much things use in general and what you can pull from it. So that is about it for this video. Again, with this generator, we can do everything that we need to and more. We don't run air conditioning when we lose power because we have central air conditioning and that's far too much to run off this generator. If you want your house to be like you didn't lose power, then you're going to want to install a whole house generator. But those costs, you know, like well over 10 times what these little guys cost. This was 300 bucks. And you don't need to install it. You just kind of carry it wherever you need it and uh, run cords. Running cords is inconvenient, but it works. Speaking of running cords, if you're going to want to get an adapter like this if your generator only has one outlet like this one does. This adapter takes the uh, twist lock plug here and it lets us pull from two sides of it because 3,500 watts is far more than one outlet can safely provide. Two outlets would cover it. So I complained that this generator only has one outlet, but that's a key thing to remember. If you're powering a lot of stuff, do not go through one cord. That's very unsafe. The cord may start heating up on its own and melt and cause a short, maybe even start a fire. So don't forget, electrical safety rules still apply when you're using your generator. It's not like the generator is some magic thing that you can just pull whatever you want from it. The electricity coming out of it is almost exactly the same as what comes from the outlets in your home. So don't forget to be safe around generator electricity. But that's just about pulling it. But Again, this generator does everything we need to do and more. We don't run air conditioning. If we had a window unit air conditioner, we probably would. And indeed, our friends borrowed this once and they had a portable air conditioner. It could run that just fine. But number one thing to do, find out how much you need and then apply it to your generator. If you're in a situation like my family situation where this is just for emergencies, this generator or something of a similar capacity is probably a great choice. Just haul it outside when you need it, start it up, plug things into it, and then get power back, undo what you did, and then you're, you're ready to go. And, but again, you won't, you won't be able to basically have it as though you didn't lose power. It's not like a whole house generator. You're going to have cords running everywhere. Your lights won't work, things like that. And that reminds me of something I didn't bring up. Lights, almost negligible because lights don't use much power. But if you want to account for that, just think, how large is the bulb? There you go. If you're running 100 watt light bulbs, 100 watts. I mean, it's that simple. CFLs, generally are one-fourth, a little less than one-fourth of their equivalent. So if you don't know off the top of your head 
think 13, 14 watts for 60 watt equivalent, 23, 24 for 100. But like I said, lights is pretty much negligible because, I mean, you set up a couple lamps around your house, and especially if you're using CFLs, almost nothing. But anyway, if you're like our family, and this is just for an emergency, 3,500 watts is more, more than enough. But if you want to keep your house as though you didn't lose power, you're going to need something larger. But number one thing, figure out what you need, and then size your generator. That's what I can recommend. But this generator is fine, I would say, for most people, just to keep your food preservation equipment working and also do a couple other tasks. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Unfortunately, I need to walk back up and press the stop button on my phone. So I'm going to walk up that way. But as I usually sign off, my name is Alec, also known as Edison Photo One. If you have any questions or comments, please feel, leave, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Please be nice, though, and uh, I will get back to them as soon as I can. But anyway, I hope it was helpful to you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.